Let's talk about Zastam, the autocratic leader of Thay, a nation within the Forgotten Realms, and the Zulkir of Necromancy for the Red Wizards. He's a powerful lich with an undead army led by vampire generals. And while not as well known as Vecna and Aserak, he's an interesting villain in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. Where did he come from? What was his rise to power? Well, let's take a look. But first, this video is sponsored by Dungeon Denizens, a fantasy monster book for both 5e and Dungeon Crawl Classics role-playing game. 500 monsters exist within these pages, and I was very excited to find this hardback monster book to aid my Dungeon Crawl Classics game. They have physical books, PDFs, and virtual tabletop resources for both systems, full color brand new art, developed game statistics, along with ecology and lore for the monsters. Books like this can be an inspiration for your next campaign. Check out the link in the description to explore Dungeon Denizens, a 5e and DCC compatible monster books for your fantasy role-playing game. And thanks again, Goodman Games, for sponsoring this video. Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. To start, let's re-familiarize ourselves with the Red Wizards of Thay, because my first Red Wizard video was five years ago. So that's kind of fun to remember. Thay is an interesting area in Eastern Faerun that is ruled by powerful wizards who wear red robes, thus known as the Red Wizards of Thay. They are considered lawful evil, and they try to manipulate situations for the benefit of themselves and Thay. You'll find red wizards popping up here and there in Forgotten Realms adventures and novels. They make for a good villain and generally cause trouble when they show up. The Red Wizards are the top of the social hierarchy in Thay, and Thay is also controlled by Zulkirs, who are eight of the strongest Red Wizards. Each Zulkir specializes in a school of magic, such as transformation, divination, conjuration, etc. Now, these eight rulers were supposed to keep one another in check for the benefit of Thay, but that changed with Zastam. Zastam was born in 1104 DR, Dale Reckoning, and to put that into perspective, the current year of the realms is supposedly 1495 DR. As a Thean child, he was tested for magic potential at an early age, and he received a magical tutor, but Zas decided he could be far more powerful without his teacher. So Zas started hiring adventuring parties to go out and find magical items for him. He started a large collection of magical objects and artifacts, and he would murder his hired adventurers if they ever got too powerful to keep his plans going. Zas also had an interest in magical items and started his collection very early on through this process. And eventually he killed his mentor and took his arcane devices, potions, and books. Then he animated his mentor's body as an undead servant to patrol his lair. To Zas, a body was another magical reagent. Waste not, want not. Now, each red wizard specializes in a school of magic, and Zastam's speciality is necromancy. His goal was to become a Zilkir, which is a position held for life. His only path to becoming a Zilkir was to assassinate the current Zilkir of necromancy. So, time out, because we need to talk a little bit about older editions and magic. Now, there are eight Zulkirs and eight schools of magic. In earlier editions of D&D, there was a way to specialize in a school of magic that was far more restrictive than in 5th uh, edition Dungeons & Dragons. There were certain benefits and penalties for specializing in a school of magic to the extreme where if you specialized in one school of magic, you were then prevented from casting spells in an op opposing school of magic. So there were mechanical benefits for specializing in, say, necromancy, but it would ban you from illusion spells. Plus, spells from the opposed school would have a higher chance of working against you. So that being said, if you are a necromantic red wizard, there really is only one person you can take out to then be the new Zulkir of necromancy. In 1157 DR, Zass led a group of other Red Wizards to slay Nyressa Flass, who was a vampire Red Wizard and the current Zulkir of Necromancy. 
After Nyressa's demise, Tam was named the successor and became the new Zolkir of necromancy. Now, Zas's next step to increase his power was to become a lich. And two years later, he accomplished this, but the story of how is a little bit odd and kind of fuzzy. So I made a video on how to become a lich. It's not really a super documented process. Normally it's a, a, a whole process involving potions and things like that. Or sometimes you have to make a pact with Orcus, the demon lord of undeath. For Zas, the specifics are fuzzy because his transformation involved a failed attempt to conquer a neighboring region. In that attempt, he returned with a serious wound and was going to die, but through some magical elixirs, he was saved and transformed into a lich. So we don't have the specific process, but this definitely wasn't the typical process for lichdom. But maybe this was all a facade created by Zas to make him seem truly unkillable. I like to think that he had been working on this process for a while, and being attacked by such a powerful enemy was just part of the ritual that he needed to accomplish. Maybe we'll find out more details in the future. Zolkirs rarely get along with each other, and Zastam had plenty of rivals and secret enemies within Thay. In 1367, Zas set about creating a powerful artifact that would enslave the demon lord Eltab to his bidding. Now, Eltab is an interesting demon lord who has been locked underneath Thay Mount, a mount in Thay, for a very long time. The ritual uh, involved placing nine magical runes on a throne called Thacrosil's Seat. Each rune required the sacrifice of a powerful, good-natured magic user. And he had completed eight of the nine runes, but was thwarted at the very last one, which caused an earthquake and released Eltab from his prison below the mountain. Eltab was defeated, but because of ancient magic placed upon him, when he died, he didn't return to the abyss like demons do, but instead to the Citadel of Conjurers in Impilator, which is another region in the Forgotten Realms. He's kind of got his own story that we could dig into later, uh, and I probably have talked about him in other videos, but he's still there, which could be a fun plot point going forward in the Forgotten Realms. Now, Zas grew tired of being only in partial control, partial control of Thay, of the Red Wizards, of the world. The seven other Zulkirs had their place, but he didn't necessarily want to share rulership over Thay with them. So in 1375, he orchestrated the murders of two Zulkirs and convinced the people of Thay that he could be the one to stop this terrible threat. The people didn't know that it was him. They weren't sure what was happening, just assassinations going on and things like that. But in order to solve all of these problems, he needed to be elected supreme ruler of Thay. Now, the remaining Zulkirs attempted to stand against this plan, so Zastam declared war on the opposing Zulkirs and, and attempted to take the position by force. This caused a civil war in Thay that lasted for two years, but Zas won. He became the ruler of Thay. He evicted leaders who challenged him and reformed the government with loyalists. Now, some fear under Zas's rule that Thay will become a land overrun by undead. All don't look at Zastam as the savior of the Thayan people. He has a strong Palpatine vibe. Now, during the spell plague, Zas summoned the deity Bane and made a bargain with him to hand over his soul after a thousand years. In return, he would be granted more power and knowledge of chaotic magic. Later in 1478 DR, Zastam created the Dread Rings of Power across Faerun. Now, a Dread Ring is a location, usually ring-shaped, that serves as a ritual site where necromancers can steal the souls of the living to feed their necromantic powers. It's pretty interesting. Creatures that die in the ring, or sometimes near the ring, their souls are caught up in it, and it becomes this magical well of spiritual energy for necromancers to pull from. You can use it to create undead, to build structures, or to upcast spells. It really is limited to your imagination. Now, Zas poured many resources into defining and creating these dread rings. He wanted to use the power to ascend to godhood, probably so he didn't have to hand his soul over to Bane uh, in the coming years. Tough 
<laughs> the first attempted Dread Ring was built outside of Neverwinter Wood, and the plan was to awaken the fire primordial beneath Mount Hotnow, and that the destruction would feed the Dread Ring, giving Zass a huge influx of power. This was thwarted by adventurers, but Zass did build a few other Dread Rings. They were just much closer to Thay and used mostly for research. Zass is cold and calculated. He is blunt and patient. An excellent villain to use in your campaign. Perhaps you're an ex-red wizard who wants vengeance against Zass to free Thay from the clutches of his rule. Now, if you want to run a red wizard themed campaign in or around Thay, the Spellbound box set and the Dreams of the Red Wizards supplement from earlier editions of D&D are really great to have. They have details on Thay and life, uh, NPCs, plot hooks, there is also a DM's Guild supplement called Thay, Land of the Red Wizards that I highly recommend, written by Ed Greenwood himself with Alex Kramer and Alan Patrick. This has really great info, and it's up to date with the current timeline, if that's something that matters to you. I did a review on this book, and I totally recommend it. You should check it out if you're interested in more Red Wizardy stuff. Thanks again, Goodman Games, for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out their Kickstarter, Dungeon Denizens, with over 500 monsters for your 5e or Dungeon Crawl Classics role-playing game. Links to the supplements I used to research this video down below and other videos that you might find interesting, such as more info on the Red Wizards, how to become a lich, or why this book is cool. Thanks all for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one.